Oh, protection plan. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You can see that as much as Al Gore thinks that uh, right. we need to protect our environment, God doesn't seem to be too concerned about it. That's right. Amen. And he seems to believe the earth will bounce back fine. Uh-huh. It can take whatever it needs as far as plagues be poured out on it. Amen. And once again, we see that here in this passage. We've got eight points to our message today. Number one, we see the setting. John heard a great voice crying out from the temple, saying to the seven angels, Go your ways, pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now we see this very first one, this first container. Verse 2, the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast upon them which worshipped his image. Right. Yeah. So, it's not going to pay mm -hmm. for everybody to show their allegiance. Right. To receive the kiss of the man of sin. To take his name, number, or mark on the right hand or forehead. To get down and worship that image of the beast that the false prophet caused us to come to life. It's not going to pay. Mm -hmm. no. As much as everybody goes, things going to pay because they can buy and sell if they show allegiance. Yeah. And the people who will not show allegiance, it'll cost them greatly. But before it's all over, no, 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 no. In this world and the world to come. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. There's some awards and reward. Amen. And those people who swear allegiance with the son of the devil, they're going to get there. That's right. Before they die. And we see that even here. Uh, we don't know if that little lithium battery starts leaking in that uh, RFID chip that they're wanting to put in everybody. And that could be a part of it. But we know that even today with the AIDS epidemic that's going across the globe. Now, how did AIDS get here? Again, it was a man invented plague, isn't it? That's right. Yes. Fort Detrick, Maryland's where they made it and manufactured it, and it really came as a result of mixing two things. They had a, a defoliant that they were using in Africa to get rid of all the weeds and plants, sort of like Agent Orange we used in Vietnam, and of course that messed our boys up pretty bad physically. Yes, sir. Right. Because they can come up with these chemicals that will kill the plants. But it wasn't enough that they had these chemicals killing the plants. They also wanted to get rid of a lot of the bugs. Because there's a lot of bugs in this world. In fact, even the scientists say that someday the bugs will rule the world. If evolution had its way, which it won't. <laughs> Amen. That's right. Because there's just so many of them. And man, with all his chemicals, ain't got enough chemicals to stop them all. Right. Mm -hmm. There's not enough windshields to stop them all. <laughs> or fly flying. So, in Africa, they were spraying this defoliant, and they were spraying this insecticide. And, of course, the monkeys out there just swinging around having a big time, eating them bananas and everything, eating vine. And uh, so, of course, he gets both these chemicals in him, and then they said that when the natives started eating that monkey meat, Right. It's when people started coming down with AIDS. Because mm -hmm. there wasn't any cure for it. They didn't know what to, how to cure it and what to do to cure it. It was a mixing of those two things, those two poisons. And of course, among the homosexual community, it got out of hand real fast. Right. In fact, when it was first discovered, they called it not AIDS, but they called it GRIDS. That's right. Originally. That's right. They call it GRIDS, if you remember. Yes, sir. Because it was called the gay related immunodeficiency. That's right. Syndrome. Mm -hmm. exactly right. Then they said, oh, it sounds like we're picking on the poor gay, so let's call it AIDS. You know, sort of like Congress has all those AIDS, you know. <laughs> they wanted it to sound more respectable. So now it's called the acquired. Immunodeficiency syndrome, amen. But the, the Bible says here that there's a sore, and it appears 
as a plague. And so we that believe the Bible, All right. we have some insight here. As already the Bible's talked about this mark of the beast these people have taken. And we've talked about the leopard and his mark. Right. This is Revelation 13. It's just amazing how much the number 13 keeps popping up when we study the 666 in Revelation 13, 18, which is 6 plus 6 plus 6. And so there's only one chapter in all the Bible that talks a lot about the plague. Right. And that is Leviticus chapter 13. Oh, Amen. That's right. Amen. Now when we go to Leviticus 13, yeah. over 36 times we read the word plague. Huh. So there's definitely, if you believe the King James Bible is uniquely the Word of God, which of course I do, then you can get more insight on this plague that's going to beset these men that have taken the mark of the beast and worshipped the image of the beast and this plague that's going to bust down on them so that it's described here in Leviticus 13 and it discusses leprosy now what's so interesting is the Bible bears out these great scientific truths that number one there's more than one kind of leprosy yeah. Yeah. Now, as I've studied this over the years, I've learned quite early on that, that leprosy was caused by a little microorganism, a form of bacteria, that eats away at people, and it eats off fingers, and eats off... Mm -hmm. People be old, have a, even their bones showing at yep. times. I've seen it. It just keeps eating and eating and eating away at person until it finally gets to their vital parts and away they go. Mm -hmm. And say people can live a long time with leprosy. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting, there's different kinds. As you read Leviticus 13, it speaks about in verse 2 here, the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, verse 2, when a man shall have in the, the skin of his flesh a rising, a scab, or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of, the fl of his flesh like the plague of leprosy, then he shall be brought unto Aaron the priest and unto one of his sons, the priest, and the priest shall look on the plague in the skin of the flesh, and when the hair of the plague is turned white, and the plague in the sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on him and pronounce him unclean. If the bright spot mm -hmm. be white in the skin of his flesh, and the, and the sight uh, be not deeper than the skin, and the hair thereof be not turned white, then the priest shall shut him up that hath the plague seven days. So it's very interesting as you read through here, the plague, the spot, and the different kinds. Uh, verse 7, but if the scab, mm -hmm. verse 8, the scab, verse 12, if the leprosy break out abroad in the skin, and the leprosy cover all the skin of him that hath the plague, from his head even to the foot, whether the priest look at Verse 13, Then the priest shall consider, and behold, if the leprosy have covered all his flesh, he shall pronounce him clean that hath the plague. It is all turned white. He is clean. Mm -hmm. Not if it turns black, but if it turns white. He's clean. Hmm. But when raw flesh appeareth in him, verse 14, he shall be <laughs> unclean. Verse 19, In the place of the boil there will be a white rising or a bright spot. So there's these different kinds of leprosy. Number one, we learn these different kinds of leprosy. Very interesting. And something else is the Bible describes these different kinds of leprosy. He finally gets over here and talks about verse 45, And the leper in whom the plague is, his clothes shall be rent, and his head bare. He shall put a covering upon his upper lip and shall cry, unclean, unclean. Now the Bible describes here how these people were to be quarantined. Mm -hmm. They were to be taken.